everyone. Welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting. Tonight is July 10th, 2023, and I will call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I am the chair of the Redevelopment Board, and I'd love for the other members of the Redevelopment Board to please introduce yourselves. Steve Rebelak, good evening. Eugene Benson. Good hello. And we have um, Claire Ricker, the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, also joining us this evening. So we will go ahead and uh, start our meeting this, this evening with the first agenda item, which is the public hearing for docket number 3756, 1309 to 1323 Massachusetts Avenue. And I will turn it over to Claire uh, for an overview of the uh, hearing this evening. Great, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to make one other edit that was just pointed out by Mr. Uh, Revelak. Um, we are talking about docket 3756 this evening, um, which is a sign package that has been put together for 1309 to 1323 Massachusetts Avenue. Now, usually when these signs come into the office, if they meet the terms of the zoning, um, I, I approve them administratively. So there was one sign in this package that did meet the zoning and I approved it administratively. But when I started to look at the remainder of the signs, because there are quite a few of them, six total, five that you'll see tonight, um, I thought it was a good idea for the board to, to take a look at this uh, application. Um, every every uh, sign has a, a little bit um, of relief needed. Um, you know, every sign is, is operating a little differently. Um, and so uh, without, I, I, I just thought the board should, uh, should take a look at this um, in total. Um, it really will sort of redefine the look um, of the heights. Um, and so that is where we are. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Um, so as a next step, what we'd love to do is invite the applicant. Do we have the applicant with us this evening? Great. If you could um, take a seat in the front row, what we'd love for you to do, please, is to um, introduce yourself. And um, you uh, can have up to 10 minutes for any type of introduction or um, any, any context that you'd like to give us, just so that I can explain the process. What will then happen is um, the board will discuss, um, if we have any questions, we'll ask them of you. We'll also give our um, initial thoughts for some discussion. We'll then open this up for public comment. Anyone who's here this evening who wishes to um, address the board with any thoughts on the application will be welcome to do so. We'll close public comment and then the board will deliberate the process. So if you could introduce yourself and um, give us some context, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you, members of the board. My name is Bill McFadden. I am representing Barlow Signs. On behalf of the property owner and tenants of 1309, 1323 Mass Ave, Barlow Signs respectfully, respectfully requests consideration for special permit approval for replacement signs. Our proposal is part of a concerted effort to beautify and improve the storefronts of the following tenants. Classic Cafe, Classic Kitchen, Heights Barber, Horizon Salon, which a permit has been issued for that. RB Ace Disposal and RB Farina Roofing. Recent paint and building improvements were the beginning of our client's move to update this property. And the completion of these efforts with the, will be the installation of a unified signage plan across the tenant storefronts. Much, through, much thought has been put into the overall design of each of the signs to convey a seamless, attractive look across the ten, six tenant stores. Would you have the, the picture of the overall picture? In our review of the Town of Arlington's requirements that special criteria, special permit criteria be met. The use slash relief requested is required by special permit per the Arlington zoning ordinance. The requested use is essential to identifying each tenant to the wayfinding public and is an obvious desirable update to the public's safety and welfare. Quick identification on the busy Mass Ave benefits the public, especially with the proximity being close to Park Ave. Uh, to scale, clean, clear signage aids in traffic and pedestrian safety. The proposal will have no effect on public utilities. We are seeking only slight modifications to the bylaw. The intent of the bylaw remains fulfilled. The request will be an improvement to the property and add to the character of the district and is not detrimental in any way. The character of the neighborhood is improved when property owners and businesses seek 
and complete updates to their storefronts. That's really all I have. If, if you had any questions as far as manufacturing, um, they are not illuminated signs. They have dimensional lettering on them. Um, but what we did along with our client is we tried to keep all the, the color schemes standardized. Um, that's also going to aid as well if the tenant leaves and they have a new tenant come in. We can kind of keep it standardized across the board with this property. I believe that's all I have. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, before I turn it over to my colleagues, um, I just want to say that I'm um, very happy to see the investment that the landlord is, is putting into the, the, the building in terms of the recent painting and um, this type of a um, consolidated sign package. So thank you. Uh, Ken, I'll turn it over to you first. Any questions or comments? Um, yeah, the, the, you, you put in a consolidated view up along uh, the signage band. I appreciate that a lot. I think that looks nice and it helps. Uh, but um, what about the windows and the graphics on the windows or, or anything else that goes along there? That, that is part of signage too. Yes. So are they going to take those things down? If, if that uh, is a concern, we can certainly address it. Um, there, I don't believe there's going to be any issues with that if, if this board chooses to take that approach. Well, I, I would, I'm taking that per personally, yeah. saying the signage overall is, sure. is something we want to look at. Okay. Not just a sign ban up top. We want to also look at the windows and how everything else looks, because it, it goes with the overall appearance of, of the whole street. Right. And I think that's very important. I think that's what you're trying to say, too. Correct. Um, so when you say you look at it, I mean, it's, it's going to be subjective to my, at least my approval of the signage. Sure. That all that signage on the windows are taken down, or let's talk about it. Say what stays up and, and see what the percentage is. I'm not gonna, but I consider that part of the signage. Um, and then um, I know your desire to make the sign as big as possible, okay? But right now, when I look at the signs along the yeah, street there, they look like they're ready to bust out of that uh, um, that signage band. It doesn't seem like it's fitting in there very comfortably I wanna, when I look at it, okay? okay. I mean, is there a way of, of maybe uh, slimmering it down a little bit or something? It's just so it, it looks like it's all squeezed in there. You know, like a, you got like a suit size that's one, too sm one size too small for you now, okay? So can, can I ask a couple questions for clarification sure. to your intent? So they are currently, um, Beyond, they're asking for relief in the spacing from uh, the the top to the to the bottom. I believe it's um, uh, seven inches is re required in terms of the um, depth, and they're only showing two two inches. From are you talking about vertically top bottom or left right? I would say both. And they are asking for relief on both, so yeah. that's great to clarify. Okay. Um, I would be. Uh, I'd be okay with giving me maybe give me relief on the side to side, because I don't think that's as much of a squeeze. But I think the most important squeeze is the fact that it's going to top to bottom. Okay. And um, the fact that these signs are very similar, but they're right now like up down all over the place. Uh, I'm assuming that the two on the on the right will keep the same height or some of like that, and then the three or four on the on the left will be maintain a similar height. So we have. So look at that, you know, something Correct. established. Because um, there is a strong cornice there right now above it. Yes. That, that really emphasized that. Um, that's all I have to say for now. Okay. Great. Perfect. Thank you, Ken. Gene. I mean, I agree that the signs would look much better than the current sign. Yes. So the standard that you have to meet to get exceptions is the architecture of the building, the location of the building relative to the street, or the nature of the use of the building is such that we should alter, allow you to alter the current sign requirements. So what is it about the architecture of the building, the location relative to the street, or the nature made of the building that would say to us it's okay to allow um, 
something that otherwise would not be allowed, size, placement, things like that? Well, to, the issue is uh, it, its size. If you're familiar with this building, I mean, you do have, you have a lot of traffic, there are trees there. The, the copy, what we call it the copy, the, the, the text, if you will, um, it is not, it, it, it's not busting out. You're trying to standardize that rectangular shape so that you're standardizing across the board. And if you look at some of the copy here, like for example, classic kitchen and bath, there you're stacking that copy. Um, and, and if you were to bring it back smaller, you're, you're losing that visibility, you're losing the visibility. This here right now, classic kitchen and bath, kitchen and bath is only five inches tall. You know, classic obviously standing out at 11 inches. Uh, Farina roofing is 11, eight and a half inches tall. Um, and when you're driving down the street like that, you're, you don't want it so small that people are gonna start squinting their eyes and kind of doing that. You want it to pop, but you don't want it to go, you don't want to go crazy on it. So we found it was a, this is a, a fairly decent compromise that it's not sticking out like a sore thumb, it has a, an elegant to it, but it's also a safety feature where people are not gonna be doing this to, to squint to see what's there. So, so we, it was kind of a compromise the way we designed it. So if I understand you, the issue is there are too many letters in some of the names of some of the buildings. Well, it is. A, for example, if you see, you yeah, if you see like Heights Barbershop, for example, that's three layers. Heights Barbershop, and then the service, the walk-in services, the tagline underneath. Uh, RV East Disposal, it's, it's good readability. Farina Roofing, good readability because it's one line. And when you get into the one line, you have to. That's where you, where you, with the two lines or the three lines, that's where you have to kind of compromise and try to standardize something that looks appealing across the entire store fence. So let me just see if I understand, Claire. For each one of the signs that are in front of us now, they're, you say that they're too large? So what I have is that each of these signs exceeds, so when you do the, the math, they're allowed a six foot sign, but they're going for 10 feet to cover the storefront. Which, you know, the board will have to decide if that makes a difference. Um, for the classic kitchen and bath, they would be seeking relief for the two window signs and also relief for the total signage area in excess of the allowable. Uh, ace disposal, 10 foot sign in excess of allowable. Six, furthermore, while 12 inches are required at the left and right edges of the sign, the applicant seeks relief to install the sign with zero distance to the right and left. Mm -hmm. That would be for M and B. And then the rest um, as you go down. Now, I did not notice. Uh, that they were there's also relief needed at the top and the bottom of the sign um, So they would need relief on that as well. And I would have to update the memo So none of the signs themselves are too big. It's just the placement of so the signs. Some of them are too, some of them are too big Not total square foot but length Length, length. length. Mm -hmm. Some of them are too long. Correct. Some of them the placement is off. None of them are square foot Correct. Total square footage is too big on classic mm -hmm. kitchen and bath because, because of the two of the window, window signs. And I believe the that there's signs. another, the two window signs, uh, mm -hmm. classic cafe. Classic cafe. Two window signs. Right. But if they take those off, it would be fine. Yeah. With the total square footage. Correct. Or yes. even yeah. just having one window sign. Correct. Correct. would be fine with the total square footage. Okay. okay. Thanks for the clarification. Sure. I have no other questions. Great. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I was, I guess, one of the, overall, I think this is this is an improvement. They, I do feel like, where Ken, or my colleague, Mr. Lau, thought they were a little too tall, I feel like they're a little too wide. Um, it, to me, they take up maybe too much of the sign band. Um, you know, I could... I think eight foot would, I'd be happy with eight foot, um, but yeah, I, I, I think they, I think it does fill up the band a little, a little too much. Any other 
any other comments, Steve? Uh, that's it. Okay. I have several. Um, so uh, I appreciate the um, the black and white for its um, high contrast yes. and relief. My concern is that this is a white building, and with the white background, it completely washes out. And so my question is whether or not you explored with the landlord at all inverting and having a black background and white or gold or some other signage color, because for me right now, this really detracts from the overall aesthetic of the building. There was conversation with the uh, client in the early stages and they were, they do like this color scheme with there's, there's some other ideas out there. Um, they were not a fan of a black background, kind of like Wonder Yoga. Um, they, they were definitely a favor of black text, white background. Okay, um, I am certainly not uh, not in favor mm -hmm. of that, so I just want to explain okay. that and we can certainly have a discussion um, at, the, at the board. I think, again, if we are going to approve a signed package, um, I would like to see something that um, better enhances and um, overall uh, improves the aesthetic of the, of the, of the building itself. Um, so that's one question I had. Um, the, this, the second item as well, um, with regards to the Heights bar Barbershop sign, I think overall the legibility of that sign, to your point about driving on the street and wanting to be able to see the sign that's big enough, would be significantly improved if you removed the third line with walk-in only so that you could um, actually see the business name. Um, we typically discourage ours, um, and in fact, I believe I have to double check the, um, Jean, perhaps you could double check, I think in the signage bylaw, we specifically prohibit ours being included on the signage band, walk-in only, line line, I mean, well, sure. services, et cetera, but services um, can't, be, can't be shown. So um, I, I'd prefer to see that as a two-line sign. I think to Steve's point, um, I could certainly make a case, I know in other cases such as the um, the Heights Pub, we allowed the sign to take up more of the, we granted that relief for the vertical um, uh, distance that was required. Um, I agree with Steve, I, I feel that for some of these smaller storefronts, the sign feels too wide. And so I think that the two that are, um, that are, you know, significantly, that, that are taking up the full width are um, the, uh, the middle sign, so the roofing company, as well as the uh, disposal company. And so that perhaps stacking the, uh, the name of the business that would be then consistent with the stacking of the others, mm -hmm. and then perhaps pulling the, um, the the sides of the sign in might provide some more of that relief okay. that we're that we're looking for. Um, so that's one suggestion that I think I'd, I'd love to to speak about with my fellow board members to see if they're in agreement. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to confirm was that Classic Cafe, that's a new black awning, correct? The awning has been removed. There was an old awning there? But there's no new awning. There's no so, new awning. Okay, correct. that was the question I had. Um, let's see. The blanks. And then, um, again, with regard to the wall, and window signage, um, per the bylaw, two signs are permitted. So the two window signs plus the additional sign, you know, if we allow some relief in some of the other dimensions, and again, we'll, we'll need to discuss and decide whether or not width or height um, is something that we would grant relief on. Um, to, to Kim's point, I think I'd, I'd like to see the window signs reduced down to, to one um, for consistency. And quite frankly, so that people can see it. I mean, that's that's part of the reason why we um, required that uh, that signage is, is decreased on some of the windows, so that people really have an opportunity to, to see into the spaces and and appreciate as they're walking by the, the businesses themselves. Um, I believe that is all that I have. So, um, Kim, did you have any thoughts? 
on height, width, coloration? Um, yeah, I, I would go along with the rest of my board members as far as uh, the width. Um, how do you plan to light these things, or are they lit at all? These are, are we're producing not illuminated signs. So you don't you don't have any like uh, Barlow lights? Barlow doesn't. No, we're just putting up a, an aluminum sign with dimensional copy, no illumination. That's you. But what is the owner's intent? Are they going to hang over lights that shine? If on it, it would be it would be like more. I would LED gooseneck lighting that would come over mm -hmm. and shine down on it. But do would they, would they have to have a a hearing on that for for, for that uh, Claire, or that's something that you just do a separate permit? No, they could probably get that approved administratively yeah. because that's permitted. Um, however my view it should be part of the signage package if that's what's intended so if it's not intended that's fine we'll right. approve the non-illuminated definitely no intent it never came to us as an okay then we i think we should assume it is not because okay, i think it'd be a nice overall approach to seeing the whole thing mm -hmm. lights and signage and you know, I, i'm very supportive of, of fixing this place up you know, it's my neighborhood <laughs> yeah you know, i eat the diner there my son gets his hair cut there I mean, there's sure. things that... The signs are definitely an improvement from what's there now. Yes. Sure. Um, so I, I would say I would say if we um, made them get down to uh, two lines, I think it's a very good idea, and maybe less words, and uh, so you, you actually see it, you know, uh, a little better. That might that might be uh, that might be worth it right there. Okay. Um, I think that's a phenomenon. I'm okay with the white signs with the black letters. So just to let you know. Um, I don't see any reason to approve these um, their variations from the bylaw. I don't think it meets any of the requirements. I think if you remove some of the words from the signs, which I think would make them just as good. And you could meet the sizing of the signs. So I'm unless I'm convinced otherwise, I'm inclined not to vote for this. I don't think it meets any of the requirements to allow us to vary the required sizes and locations of the signs. And as my board members know, I tend to be pretty strict about this when it comes to science. So that's what I am on. Steve? Yeah, I, uh, going back to color schemes, I was going to, one of the questions I had, I had written down to ask was, you know, to what is, if they were all going to be black, or black on white, and if you had considered different color schemes or different variations, but I, I see that you're trying to get a consistent look, so, so that's fine. Um, I do appreciate Ms. Zendery's suggestion for, um, you know, kind of removing, removing the one line from the Heights Barbershop. The walk-in service. The walk-in services line and possibly breaking up the, the two RV signs um, so that it was two lines and then could come in, uh, could be narrowed. Okay. Um, so, Gene, the only thing that, that I'll just, you know, Say in terms of a dialogue about mm -hmm. the um, potential, um, the potential uh, relief um, is I think that one of the one of the challenges here definitely is the the depth of the the sign band, um, and if we do want them, number one I think other than the walk in, the words are the name of the they're the, they're the company names right so I don't think that there's a lot of ability to just remove words. However, I think that in my point of view, by giving them a relief vertically and asking them to come in on the horizontal distance to mm -hmm. what is required, um, that requiring them to stack the lettering still allows us to be look legible and more appropriately fits the width of the storefronts that are that are there. I, to, to me, that's one of the, you know, in the three storefronts on the um, that are to the right of, of um, 
classic kitchen and bath. Mm -hmm. Claire, I'm sorry, would you mind just going to the, so um, one that, it's okay, the one that's yeah. all three mocked up, or all you four of them all, together? Sure. please. Perfect, thank you. Um, those are the ones that really feel like they're crowding each other to, to me. The ones on the left. The three, the, the three to the right of classic kitchen, right. between right. Cla the, between the two classics, between classic <laughs> cafe and classic <laughs> kitchen and bath. And so in my point of view, if we give them relief on the, um, on the vertical and they bring them in and um, all three of them to the uh, required uh, horizontal square footage or horizontal linear footage um, and then ask you know they can certainly do so by stacking the um, the two uh, the two to the other side of the barber shop that to me that works with the architecture and it um, it allows some some consistency but that's my point of view I wanted to talk through architecturally how I'm looking at this. So what do we do with classic cafe? So that that, that meets the requirements from, uh, in terms of the length of the sign, uh, because it is a longer storefront, and therefore it's set in the appropriate dimension. Where they're over is by having two uh, wall signs, that's where their square footage is over. So by reducing it to one, that brings it in compliance. The only thing that they need relief for is the vertical. So the set um, set back from the top and the bottom. But again, if we are looking for consistency here, that's one relief. I personally would be okay with with allowing for consistency, you know, knowing that given the width of those storefronts on the right, it's um, it's really challenging to have a meaningful sign in that space if we're asking them to um, to decrease the overall length so that it's not literally lease line to lease line. And how about the classic kitchen? What would you do with that? I would allow that one as, as shown because to me that fits the size of the that and particular storefront. I would leave. I would allow that for consistency. If we're going to allow, um, if we are going to allow the relief on the other three signs, I would allow the relief on that sign as well. So there's this singular data. So why across. would why would we not allow the relief on top and bottom when they would all be consistent across without having to create the relief? I think that it will be too small if we ask them to pull in. From mm -hmm. the sides, mm -hmm. the depth, the length that they need to, and ask them to press mm -hmm. vertically. In my opinion. Okay. So what you're saying is, have them reduce the length of the three center signs. Correct. Take out the extraneous storefront windows. Correct. Go down to one. Both. both. I do both. Not both. one. So on the classic cafe, there's lettering on both windows. So do do one. Oh, I take both of them up. Give them the relief for the height. No, they can still put on the window the hours of operation. That's not counted toward. Well, I'm just, I'm just when, when you look at the whole streetscape and you're walking along there, mm -hmm. okay, that just kind of glares at me, uh, having this up on the windows. If it's all open and you look inside as you walk along, that's the kind of image I see is. So, so here's the thing, especially with the classic cafe sign. If you're walking along, you're going to have to look up like this. That's why I would right? allow one. I would allow one because it's going to be eye level to have at least one sign in each one of the windows. I would go with the, with the flow of the group, but I just think as you walk by, you're not going to confuse a cafe with a hairstylist no, or, or, or a salon. I mean, you look inside. It's a restaurant, <laughs> uh, you know, and there's tables and chairs, and people sitting here eating. I'm not going to need to know that. But it had a restaurant there. I'd say, like, oh, it's a restaurant. It's going to be what's no. known. Which restaurant is it? Well, there is one. Well, um, that way or that way, or across the street, is it? Yeah, but. 
nothing else. Okay. <laughs> um, well, if there are no more questions, what I'd like to do, I think, at this time is open this up for public comment. Any other questions before we do so for the applicant? Um, one. Please. Are we going to try, are we okay with just trying to set some, set some constraints and then not have them come back and just have it, uh, a move it uh, with Claire or? I'd, I'd like to get to that this evening so that they can, again, unless we feel that yes, we would okay. need to, to see that again. Because I want to just say, well, we are working with um, uh, owners here trying to get things done, and I want to say I appreciate the fact that you're doing six, and, and do, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing to the whole neighborhood just now. So I, I want to give a little credit for the effort of doing that. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I, I did have one other question actually. I just saw in my notes. The classic cafe sign, is that centered on the door or on the building? That should be centered over the door. Not on the building. Because it's in the in the detail it looks like it's centered over the door and not over the width of the that section of the building. And I would prefer if that whole space is theirs for it to be centered within the the, the So lease. centered on the in the lease line. Exactly. Personally, um, and again, we can we can discuss that, but it, it feels off to me. All right. Um, so at this time, I'd like to uh, open this uh, hearing up for public comment. So if there's anyone who'd like to speak on. Um, uh, with regard to the signs, if you could raise your hand and I will call you up to speak. Seeing none, we will close public comment. All right, um, so I will turn this back to the board um, to see if we can come to a consensus. Um, it sounded like, aside from Jean, who I know was still considering, that there is some consensus that uh, perhaps allowing relief um, for the, the top and bottom um, setback from the, the top and the bottom of the sign band was something that there we're approaching a consensus on and that um, we have a proposal on the table to ask them to come into compliance with the linear footage to respect those setbacks from, mm -hmm. from the lease line and to alter the, uh, the text so that they can take advantage of stacked text, perhaps, for, for the businesses to maximize the, um, the, the size of the, of the lettering if, if that does, in fact, um, maximize the, the text size. And that we would like to go down to one window sign maximum for uh, the only two that have in this package requested window signage, which is which are classic cafe and classic kitchen and bath. Um, there Can I screen one thing there? Please. Because if you look at it really closely here, okay, what the window sign says is uh, Irish breakfast open seven days and home cooking all day breakfast. I mean, that's the signage that we're talking about on the windows. It's not. You just don't want those signs there. No. <laughs> no, be honest with you, no. I, I could get behind that for Classic Cafe. I, I do think, um, again, I have, I have no issue with a business sign being one small, you know, business sign being on the glazing as is proposed for Classic Kitchen and Bath to go down to one kitchen. as opposed to Which two. Which that one? Uh, that's just one here. Which is existing. For, so for them to keep one of the two existing window signs. I'm okay with that. And that's within, okay. I'm okay Which is with a that. business sign. Okay. I'm okay with that one. So I could, I could get behind that. So no window signs for Classic Cafe because they are not a business sign. No. I, They're yeah. an advertisement. Yes. And one, allow one of the existing window signs for Classic Kitchen and Bath. And none for the restaurant? 
Correct. Okay. And unless they want to come back with, you know, a proposal to you that is not what they serve, but is, you know, their need. Yeah. Gene? Okay, you're very convincing. <laughs> so, um, if they shrink the length of the three signs we talked about, um, okay with um, granting relief on the others because it has to do with the architecture of the building. So, if we can say that in the, um, in the findings, in the findings, I think that would be appropriate. Where do we land on the centering of the signs? Is it going to be centered on the doorway or on the lease? I think they should be set, centered within the lease. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not yeah. saying one way or the other. I'm just wondering which That's way. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Yep. Gene, Steve, do you have uh, Just preference? one one last question. Yep. Uh, with regard mm -hmm. to the, um, uh, the, the three immediately to the left of the clock, the kitchen, we're look, so we're looking at um, at a, a six foot width. Correct. Bringing them in. Okay. Just wanted to. Yeah. All I'm. I'm. A, all this sound. All this sounds fine to me. Okay. I, I think the other thing that we want to do is say something about lighting, which is that any lighting has to be um, either administratively approved by planning or come back here. Okay. Can I ask you one more question? Sure. Um, the landlord of this block, are they also the landlord of the building to the left? The pizza shop? The pizza shop. I do believe they own it, but that's, uh, they never got involved or they never had us deal with any pizza signage or anything. Those signs just... are so out of compliance. <laughs> I am the least happy with those signs of any sign in the Heights. So if you would like to pass that information I, on I to should, yeah. the landlord, that those need to come in front of us. They were installed without coming through this process that is required. Um, that would be much appreciated. No. Thank you very much. Um, OK, so if we are align aligned, um, is there a motion to um, grant relief to the vertical setbacks from the uh, top and bottom of the sign band uh, as requested with the caveat that the signs need to be brought into compliance with the um, horizontal setbacks from either uh, from the from the lease line and that the windows that no window signs are approved other than a single window sign as proposed for a classic kitchen and bath and that any lighting that may be added at a later date would need to be administratively approved by the Department of Planning and Community Development. Is there a motion? So motion. Okay. Is there I'll, a second? I'll second. Okay. Great. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I guess as well. Thank you very Thank much. You very I really much. appreciate it. Thank you. you. All right. That closes. And that closes docket number 3756 for 1309 to 1323 Massachusetts Avenue. We'll now move to agenda item number two, which is to review the meeting minutes. Uh, there were two sets of meeting minutes that were submitted. The first is for the meeting uh, from May 15th, 2023. There were already comments submitted by Jean and Steve, which were incorporated excuse me, in the uh, documents that were posted with the agenda. Um, I have no further comments. Kim, did you have any additional comments? Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, Can we take them one by one and start with May 15th? 
That's what I'm starting with. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing the 15th one, right? Correct. First page, um, brief, like middle of the page, uh, where I had made, made a statement. Yes. Okay. Um, is the second uh, second uh, sentence? He commented that these changes will be long-term changes, uh, and uh, some of which would take some, uh, take time, which is fine. But uh, increased bus service like result over time. I thought I said that uh, uh, not increased bus uh, bus service would adjust to the demand or something like that. Or not did not increase; it would just shift as as uh, as the population shifts. That they always follow what the population is not. So can we, can we just um, propose, Claire, that it change to and uh, and bus service will adapt? Yep. Okay. Will likely adapt over time. And then on the next page down, uh, uh, Ms. Lau expressed an interest in seeing a mock-up of three-family housing and six-family looks. Uh, just massing. You had the word massing somewhere in there. Uh, interest in seeing a mock-up or massing of three-family housing versus six-family housing looks like. Okay. Massing, not mock-up. Yeah. No, mock-up of a massing. Mock-up of yeah. massing. Yeah. That's all I had. Uh, Jean, any additional comments? No. Steve? Nothing here. I don't have any either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from May 15th as amended? So motion. Second. Take a vote starting with Steve? Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And the yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. We'll now move to the meeting minutes. One second. From uh, June 5th, 2023. Again, comments have already been received from Jean and Steve and Incorporated. I have no further comments. Ken? No. Jean, any additional? No. Steve? Nothing. Is there a motion to approve as amended and posted? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes from June 5th have been approved. Thank you very much. All right. I think we're almost up to date with all those meeting minutes, which is great. All right, uh, so let us move to our next agenda item, which is open forum. So for anyone who is, has joined us this evening, uh, if you would like to address the board, I ask that you please raise your hand. Um, after being called on, you will be given up to three minutes to address the board. Please note that we typically do not answer questions if there are themes. Um, at the end of public comment, we may um, make a, a statement or two to address any of those items. Um, and when you are called on, please introduce yourself by your first, last name, and address. And uh, please, yes, if you could come to the front, that would be fantastic. I have a handout for you if that's, uh, if that's can I give it to you? Or? Um, we typically need to have something submitted in advance so that we can post it. So if that's something that you wanted to, um, you could certainly hand it out now, but we would need you to submit it so that it can be posted sure. for, to for the records. Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Thank we you. just got it done today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And for the record, we are receiving a document titled MBTA C Zoning, Adding Climate Resilience and Natural Spaces. And um, again, we have requested that this be submitted so that it can be posted with the meeting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, am I being recorded? Um, oh. If you could actually sit here, they will um, they will pick you up in the, these microphones okay. right, right well, here. Okay. What I've listened in the past, it's it's very lightly picked up. You really can't understand. You mm. couldn't understand what I was saying anyway. 
Okay, so. again, we've been assured by Sean that these microphones are, are set here for that reason. Okay, so. Thank you. Where do you want me to sit? Um, right, right here would be fine. Okay. Thank you. So, um, this. I'm um, sorry, could you introduce yourself yes, first, um, last, and address? Um, my name is Susan Stamps. I am a town meeting member, a member of the tree committee, and a member of the our environmental planners gas leaks task force. And <clears throat> um, I have come before the board before to express my concerns about uh, including planning for trees, open space, and such in the MBTA zoning planning. I've been attending the uh, several of the working group uh, meetings and uh, am a member of Ac Equitable Arlington, definitely a housing advocate. I used to be on the housing authority in Carlisle where I used to live. Um, the, uh, but uh, a group of uh, six, five of us got together in the past week because we were all concerned, had the same concerns. <clears throat> Time is getting short, public comment is supposed to be closing this month and we feel that the environmental elements are, they're not even being discussed. So as we, some, and the members of this group are four out of the five are town meeting members. Um, Mary Ellen Arano, who is also co-chair of the tree committee. Elizabeth Carr Jones, who's also co-chair of Open Space. Alan Jones, who is also on the finance committee and long range planning. And myself, who is on the tree committee. And then the last person, Brian McBride, who was very involved in the Hills Hill. Uh, working on a compromise project for CPA funding. Um, so we're all very active in the community. We're town meeting members. We want to help this zoning package pass in the fall so we can join the 10 town gas ban in January. So that is our purpose. It's not to scuttle the, the zoning plan, get in the way, cause problems. It's to help. Um, we really uh, think that it needs a lot of green zoning mod, um, language in the um, in what goes before town meeting in order for town meeting to vote for it. We are looking to include provisions for climate change mitigation and enrichment of Arlington's natural streetscapes, preserving and increasing the tree canopy and accessible open spaces. Uh, this will, uh, we all know that we just had two of them the two hottest days in the recorded history of the planet uh, this month. And it's only going to get hotter. We have got to make sure that we're not just building housing, that we're also planting a whole bunch more trees, that we're leaving areas for pedestrian refuges, for rain gardens, for benches, for people to get in the shade, to make it a walkable community. That is one of the goals that was in the action plan, to make it walkable. Well, it's not gonna be walkable unless you got trees and all the um, the climate related amenities there the town is produced you're, you're at okay that's my uh, yes this, I, I appreciate this it. is so consistent with many plans the town has published thank you very much thank you and again if you wouldn't mind submitting this to, to yes. Claire that would be yes happy to thank you very appreciate much appreciate it thank you so much Susan. okay yes please I Evening. Um, Steve Kalka. I am chair of the Historic District Commission here at Arlington. I'm also a member of the Historic um, and Cultural Resources Working Group, which is working under the uh, Master Implementation Committee, the Master Plan. Um, I've been attending some of the meetings of the Working Group for the MBTA communities, and I appreciate the scope of the work they're doing and the thoughtfulness they're bringing to the exercise. Um, one thing that I think might be getting lost a little bit in the shuffle, um, I attended a, a separate seminar sponsored by MAPC about implementing or integration of community preservation goals in consideration of MBAT communities as well. Um, and they strongly suggested that's a positive thing to do to get buy-in from stakeholders and to come up with a better product overall. Um, I noticed that in Brookline and Ipswich, as well as in those in Belmont, there's actually someone with a background in preservation on the working group committee to kind of articulate that um, set of input. 
I've been attending the working group meetings and I've tried to provide that information in some context, but it's very difficult in a working group meeting because they won't allow participation by the public. They're, they're busy, they have a lot of stuff to do. Um, and I think there's a little bit of frustration that there have been different maps that come out that have impacted historic districts and I understand there's recognition of that and consideration of that, but there's been no re outreach to the historic community to inform them what's going on and how this might impact something that they're concerned about. Um, so um, I'm here to say a little bit of outreach would be great and I would love for you to encourage the working group to schedule a working session where we can um, get 10 minutes to articulate some of the issues around historic preservation for their consideration and um, provide, a, hopefully we can provide a conduit information you know, someone suggests, oh, let's look at this, um, as it happened at a working group meeting recently that happened to be right on top of the Broadway Historic District, but I could have easily provided that information if it wasn't available to the committee in real time, the working group in real time. Um, so I would just ask that you encourage the working group to reach out to the preservation community and um, schedule something on the agenda so we get the opportunity to give some input. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, if anyone's any questions. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, thank you. I think if I may, as a point of interest, on July 25th, there will be a working group session where we will allow as much public comment as we can handle. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Chuck Carney, Two Kimball Road, town meeting member, Precinct 11. Um, thank you also to the MEPA working group. You guys do a lot of work, and thank you for publishing the map early June and the second map with June 22nd. Um, after the first map was published, it raised a whole bunch of questions. Uh, people didn't understand a lot of what was behind the map in terms of building height, in terms of zoning bylaws and setbacks and so forth. Um, and then the second map was published and it did start to, I think, outline some of the parameters of the model, uh, particularly the setbacks, zero front, 10 sides, 20 rear. Um, which is good information. I think I think that will form the basis of a good debate whether that's what the, the, the town meeting wants or not. But my request is to publish more about the model. You know, what's contained in the model that UTIL is developing. Um, it, you know, they mentioned four story, max four stories. Is there any assumption about other building heights in their model? Is there any assumption about usable open space in their model? Is there any assumption about green space in the model. We, we, we don't know. And so we want to find out more about um, what's behind the assumptions um, or other outstanding questions. We understand this isn't a design, it's a little concept, but the more information that I think you can provide now, it's gonna tamp down, as, as mentioned earlier, a lot of what could be potentially objections uh, later on. So that's my request. I know there's public forums, we'll ask again, but this is also an opportunity to make that request. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. It. Yep. And if I may, the model was not developed by UTIL. The model that they're using was developed by the Department of Housing and Community Development. Oh, thanks. Uh, anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Okay. Um, so uh, appreciate all the comments this evening. Um, I think that Claire addressed um, two of them. So the questions around being able to provide some feedback on climate resilience and also the historic, um, from the preservation community, uh, uh, feedback on the historic districts. Uh, July 21st will be a good opportunity um, for those types of discussions with the working group. Um, and then with regard to the, the last comment, um, I certainly um, hear, hear your feedback. Um, one thing that we've been asking people to keep in mind is that this is an iterative process and those details um, are just being developed at, at this time. So I know that it's frustrating, but that's part of this process is you start here and then you, you work into the details. So uh, much appreciated and much more to come on those, those fine details as we go forward. Anyone else uh, for public comment this evening? Okay, so at this time we'll close open forum and we'll move to agenda item number four. Can I New say business. something in response? Um, we typically try not to get into a back and forth. I don't want to get a back and forth. Okay. If you, if you have one uh, quick comment, that would be fine. So 
so I, I appreciate your coming here, although obviously the MBTA working group is the place where you need to be first. We're going to get some product from them at some point in the future. I will say that I have said at some of the meetings that I think they have to take into consideration not only the historic districts, the town historic districts, but also the ones that are in the National Register, which at last time I looked, they hadn't identified those on the map. So I think we are sensitive to that. On the green space, and I'm another environmentalist too, I, I don't think that requiring setbacks is the only way to go about doing it. And so I think there needs to be important discussions about what are the alternatives, because some of the lots on Mass Ave and Broadway are so shallow that if you're crying green spaces, nothing's going to get built, or if you require setbacks. So I think um, there's going to have to be some discussion about what are the various ways to do it and how essential are setbacks to that. Thank you, Gene. Very disagree with what we've commented. And going through this, one of the constraints that we're operating under is that we can't impose requirements on multifamily housing in the MBTA districts that aren't also requirements for other by right development. So they, they you know, this is not a, a backboard, sorry. Thank you. I'm just stating the constraints. Please respect the rules of the state. Thank you. Okay, uh, so with that, we will close open forum and we will move to new business. Um, and I will turn it over to Claire to see if uh, you have any items to share with you this evening. Great, thank you. Um, I don't have much new business. I can say that I've been um, uh, speaking with the chair of the working group, uh, Sanjay Newton, a little bit about how we might um, move forward or at least wrap up the mapping exercise of this MBTA communities. Um, and so what we think will likely happen, what I think will likely happen, is that we'll do another joint meeting of the ARB and the working group on the 24th here. And then we'll do a joint meeting of the ARB and the working group on the 25th in their space. We're actually going to have it at town hall. That's <laughs> the 24th of July and the 25th of? Of July. OK. Yes, because they have a working group meeting immediately after the ARB meeting. Um, the working group meeting, the 25th, uh, we will have uh, lots of room for public comment. We are going to um, use that meeting as time for people to really respond to the work that we've been doing. Um, I think one of the challenges has been, because this work is iterative, because the working group has been so <laughs> passionate and lively about the work that we've done, um, you know, it's, we, I've got map after map after map um, on the website as we've been doing this work, and none of those maps are likely going to be the final map. Um, I think that on the evening of the 24th and 25th, we will have a final map. We can do some tweaking. Um, we are getting, interestingly, I think I've gotten a letter uh, from at least one property owner that would like to be included uh, in the district. And I'm, I'm a little surprised. I, I thought I would get a few more. Um, but I do think that's something we need to talk about. Um, you know, if someone wants their property in the district, is that something that, that you know, this board would be willing to entertain? Um, so anyway, that's the latest update I have on um, NBTA communities, at least in terms of scheduling and timing, um, as well as uh, the opportunity for public participation. Um, I'm imagining, too, at the ARB meeting that we will have some public comment time as well. Absolutely. Yes. 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 So just so that I'm clear, we will have our scheduled meeting on the 24th Correct. here, and that will be a working group, and then we will need to post that the read of it it is to be a working group the next night. We'll need to post that as an official redevelopment board working or meeting. Correct. If you would like a solid attendance. Correct. Okay. And what is the timing for that? I just need to rework some travel. So the redevelopment board meeting will be at 7.30. Right. It's the 25th. <laughs> the On the 25th. But we usually start at 7. And we've been going until 9. Uh, we will likely go later than that. Okay. And will we have a distinct agenda developed for each of those two meetings? That is correct. I am working with the board chair now on the agenda as well as with Teresa Marzelli, who's our community outreach coordinator. Okay, great. And if you need me to help at all, absolutely. That, that would be yes. Great. 
Okay. Any questions about the two working sessions? Gene. So I said this before. I think sometime before the proposal gets to us, the working group has to notify every owner whose property is potentially in the overlay and have an opportunity for those folks to learn about what this is about. And there's not a lot of time to make that happen. So this is a really interesting question. And thank you for bringing it up, this idea that we notify abutters. I think right now, tonight, we don't know exactly. Not abutters, but the actual property owners whose properties are going to be in the zone. So as of tonight, we don't know which properties will be in I know, but when we do. <laughs> okay. But when we do, I think. I did send out um, an email to town meeting members um, and identified the precincts that are most likely to be impacted. I do hope those folks will show up um, to the meeting um, and, make, and make some comments. Obviously, when we have finalized a, a, a zone and a map, um, people inside the zone and those adjacent to the zone will be notified for the ARB public hearings as they relate to bringing this warrant article to town meeting. So I, I will note, Jean, if we're meeting on the 24th and the 25th for two nights of a working session to get to a map that would leave um, four weeks before our hearing on the 28th. But, you know, a, a, a month. So um, I think that's that's certainly a goal to, to get to is, um, you know, it, it probably would be better to over uh, you know, to, to let people know that it will be their property or potentially, you know, so that we over communicate mm -hmm. uh, following that meeting. That sounds fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, one other thing I'd like to offer is new business, and that is that, you know, as we're moving sort of um, from, you know, we're, we're still collecting a lot of community input, but obviously um, there will be, there will be a time where we can't, you know, continue to accept comment. We need to move into project. Um, uh, advocacy. Um, I think to that end, we will be meeting. Um, David is set up, is looking to set up a meeting with Open Space and the Open Space Committee and the Tree folks. Um, and I've asked Teresa to uh, set up a meeting with Historic and those who are involved in um, Historic to do some focus groups for people who have, you know, some special interests, uh, so we can talk a little more closely about your interests um, and as they relate to MBTA communities. So. Uh, David will be uh, working with the open space folks, and as I said, Teresa Marzilli will be working with Historic. We haven't forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see, uh, one question. I know, Jean, you and um, you were talking about working with Doug Heim and Claire to look at the inclusionary zoning and when that kicks in through special permit and what impact or not that would have, do you have any updates I, there or I should we plan on talking, or, or what if that's something we might be able to talk about then on the yep. 24th, perfect. Great, uh, any other? No further new business, new business. thank you. Ken, any, Jean, no. Steve? Nothing. Okay. Uh, so at this time, um, the redevelopment board intends to move into an executive session um, to discuss strategy with respect to um, collective bargaining or lit litigation, whereas an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. The board will not reconvene an open meeting after this executive session. So um, what we will need to do is see if there is a motion from a member of the board for the ARB to close tonight's open meeting and go into executive session in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 39, Section 23B. So motion. Second. We'll take a roll call vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I guess as well. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you.